I think that Pelosi's visit to Taiwan can only be seen as a dangerous and reckless provocation to China and an escalation in the United States Cold War uh, against China. And I think that is shown by the fact that a majority of people in Taiwan opposed her, her reckless visit because it endangered the entire region. Um, and I think this, this resembles a pattern in US foreign policy um, where the US claims that they are acting in support of the people of Taiwan acting in their best interest when really they are using them as cannon fodder um, in their campaign of aggression against China in their military expansion, in their um, never ending uh, seeking of, of war profiteering and benefiting the military industrial complex in the US. Um, this resembles their policy in Ukraine where the US does not care about the people of Ukraine, they are just using them um, as cannon fodder against um, in, their, in their geopolitical games against Russia um, and any threat really to unipolar um, US hegemony. So I think Nancy Pelosi's trip can, can only be understood as extremely dangerous for all the people who are interested um, in, a, in a peaceful world. I think it's bizarre that Nancy Pelosi can go visit Taiwan and meet with separatists and support uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in arms sales to separatists while at the same time claiming she is not violating um, the one China principle that is um, com completely incomprehensible. Um, but of course, the US has a pattern of saying one thing and doing the other. Um, I. I think that it is um, also um, a matter of a misunderstanding in of regular Americans of the role um, that China plays in the world. Unfortunately, um, US Congress allocates tens of millions of dollars a year to anti-China journalism. And many Americans are, are getting news about Taiwan being in danger, Taiwan being under attack from China, and aren't even aware that the US government's own position is that Taiwan is part of China, um, which of course goes to benefit the United States, which is counting on its people to know and understand as little as possible about China so that they can understand China as the enemy. I mean, for the past 40 years, China has lifted 800, pe 800 million people out of poverty, um, while the United States has launched genocidal wars and interventions and invasions across the globe, letting millions of people wallow in poverty domestically. Um, so there's a huge lack of misinformation and propaganda that contributes to um, the understanding of China as the enemy and the US as the good guys when clearly exactly the opposite is the case. In regards to the sanctions um, on Pelosi and her family members, um, Pelosi, like many members of Congress, is a multimillionaire who benefits greatly from stocks trading, from investing in exploitative companies um, like um, Amazon and, and others. And I think it is quite ironic that her, her visit, which cost US taxpayers like $70 million, um, is now going to negatively benefit her and her husband's um, stock investing and trading. Well, they're already under scrutiny for some insider trading deals um, and other sketchy business. She's also abdicating her responsibility to, um, to address problems domestically, to use her power as a Democratic House leader. And the fallout with China is going to hurt Americans and Chinese people and the entire world when the two biggest economies are not cooperating on important issues like climate and like immigration. So again, this, this just shows how her words are completely backfiring and her actions actually have the opposite consequences of what she is claiming them to do. And it is hurting all working people. Um, but 
again, she and she and the United States ruling class um, don't really care because to them it is it is worth it to pursue this aggression against China. I think it is atrocious. Um, we are in such a fragile state um, in, in the US domestically and in the entire world. And this just shows how they are willing, um, the US ruling class is willing to start yet another conflict um, using this strategy of, of trying to indirectly provoke other countries to take action. So then they can point the fingers and say, oh, they're, they're the aggressors. It is more a testament to how advanced the US empire's imperial war machine is um, where they can go about creating these, these devastating um, conflicts with worldwide impacts, not only militarily, but um, as we're seeing with rising food prices, with food shortages, fuel shortages that are having devastating impacts for, for working people in, inside the US, in the West, in the global South, everywhere. Um, so this timing shows that the US is desperate. Empire is in decline. And the US knows that, that China is um, a much stronger and rise, more rising power than they are because they are actually built on a sustainable model of development and of investment directly in the people. Um, so I think this is another showing of, of empire in decline and desperation as the US is trying to cling on to their unipolar hegemony when clearly it is already too late and a multipolar world is emerging where China um, and the majority of the global South will, will be on the other side.